All right, well, we've got a great topic on circles tonight, one that some of us have been struggling a bit with. So make sure you stick through the whole thing. Um, we've got a nice little quiz at the end for you. So before we dive right in, let's just review the equation of a circle so you can get this box in your notes here. A circle whose centered is at HK and whose radius is R is given by this formula. Okay, so again, you should know this formula by heart. It's X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared equals R squared. Now, some tricks of the trade, of course. Remember, the center is the h and k value, and it's always the opposite. So if I said x minus 4 squared plus y plus 2 squared, my center would be positive 4, negative 2. Okay, now your radius. Again, take note, every term is squared, and that's kind of the easy thing about circles. Everybody's squared. This term squared, this term squared, and this term squared. That number at the end is equal to r squared. So to actually get your radius, you would have to take its square root. All right, let's look at a nice easy sample question. Which of the followings could have a center um, of negative 3, 6, and a radius of 3? Okay, so I just quickly start by saying it's x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. Did you get the hint? Everybody's squared. So the first thing I said to myself, well, if my radius is 3, what number actually goes here? Remember, every term is squared. So I'm not actually putting 3 there, I'm putting a 9 there, which eliminates choices 3 and 4. And then recall, we want the opposite. So this should actually be x plus 3 squared plus y minus 6 squared. And hopefully you got that ahead of me and that would give us choice 2. Now one last thing I want to talk about before we move on back about this um, equation here is I just want to talk about is this a function or not a function? Well remember, a function has to pass the vertical line test. Okay, now clearly if you just get yourself a circle, does it pass the vertical line test? Well, no. All right, and maybe one little tip for our multiple choice here is if you have the um, y squared term, okay, if this y is squared, it will not be a function, so keep that in mind. All right, again, hopefully some nice, easy questions. Our goal is just to state the center and the radius. All right, so there's D, E, and F. Um, let's be, you know, good students here. Let's pause it um, and then hit play when you're ready to check your answers. So I'm going to read mine off really quickly. Um, I see a positive 1, positive 2, so I'm saying my center is negative 1, negative 2, taking both opposites. Remember, this is not r, this is r squared. I box this in and I say r squared equals 1, and then I take my square root to get my radius. So r is also equal to 1. Uh, my center in this case, notice there's nobody being added on to the x, so hopefully you were smart and put a 0 there, and then a positive 3. Okay, now again, r squared is equal to 49 because this is squared, squared, squared. Therefore, the radius equals 7. And lastly, hopefully you said negative 6, positive 5, and you wrote down r squared equals 18. Okay, now we're going to just simplify this. If I take the square root, I've got r equals, that's 9 times 2, r equals 3 radical 2. All right, now they start to get a little tougher. And we're going to work our way up. We're going to start very simple, and we're going to get a little more complex as we go here. So let's just jot these two forms in here. We have two forms of a circle. This, again, is called the general form. Okay, and again, immediately, you should be able to tell me this is not a function because there is a y squared term. Okay, it is not a function. And then my second form is called center radius form. That's the form we've been looking at. Now, center radius form has an obvious name because you should be able to quickly see the center and the radius. All right, so next question here. Write in center radius form. All right, so here's what we do. We basically complete the square twice. We just reviewed completing the square last week, so let's go through it one more time. You're going to take this middle term with the x. We're going to divide her in half. That gets me a 5, and then we have to square it. So I'm going to add and subtract 25 in that order. x squared plus 10x, go plus 25 and minus 25. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing for the y. So I've got plus y squared minus 2y. 
We're going to complete the score on the y's. So we're going to take that negative 2 divided by 2. That gets me negative 1, square it, and I get a positive 1. So I'm going to add 1 and subtract 1. And all of that should be equal to 10. Okay, so we complete the square twice. The first three terms should factor nicely on each of these. Okay, so I'm going to say this is x plus 5 times x plus 5 minus 25 plus, again, these three terms should factor, hopefully y minus 1 and y minus 1. I've got my minus 1 equals 10. Notice, you know, lots of steps, but we're keeping them nice and neat. So then this is really x plus 5 squared. Okay, um, I'm going to group these together next. This is plus y minus 1 squared. And then I'm just going to circle these so you can see them. I'm going to do negative 25 and negative 1, which I hope you would agree is a negative 26. And I'm going to add that to this side, so plus 26. So I'm going to get equal to 36. Now I'm in center radius form, and hopefully it's very obvious that center and radius. My center would be positive 5, oops, I lied, negative 5, positive 1. And my radius squared is equal to 36, so my radius equals 6. Alright, so if I talk too fast, pause it, slow down, and rewind it. Now our second question is very, very similar. We're just going to put a star next to this one. Um, there's one little bear trap, and we again, we talked about it last week when we did completing the square. I want to remind you about this coefficient. What number has to be in front of the x squared and the y squared? I think I heard you. A 1 is correct. The x squared and y squared have to be a 1. So my first step is literally just to go through and divide everybody by the number 2. Now, I see five terms, well, actually six terms, everybody gets divided by 2. So I've got x squared plus y squared plus 3x minus 4y plus 6, and 0 divided by anybody, of course, is 0. Okay, so now it looks a little nicer, and I'm just going to rewrite it, of course, in order. So my x squared with my 3x and my y squared with my 4y plus 6 equals 0. All right, and now it's, you know, hopefully pretty easy. We're just going to complete that square twice. Now, I did put a little hiccup in here. I put a nasty one with the x, but that's okay. We're going to take that 3, cut it in half. It's just not a pretty number, so I'm going to leave it as 3 over 2. Square it. When I square that fraction, I'm going to square both the top and the bottom. So I'm going to add and subtract 9 fourths. So x squared plus 3x plus 9 fourths minus 9 fourths. All right, do it again for your y's. So I've got plus y squared. Off to the side here, I'm going to take that negative 4 divided by 2. That gets me negative 2. Square it, and I'm going to add 4 and subtract 4. And then I've got that plus 6 hanging along for the ride equals 0. Okay, those three terms, first three terms should factor nicely. Okay, now, like we said in last week's review video on completing the square, you don't have to guess at this. It's always the number you what? All right, if you can't figure it out, watch this one. All right, these first three terms is y minus 2 and y minus 2. Now again, minus 2 was the number I squared. Okay, so what do you think this one is? What is the number you squared? Well, that's 3 halves. So that's what that term is, the number you squared. Um, and now, it, oops, see, let me just double catch myself. I got my minus 9 fourths hanging out, uh, my minus 4, and my plus 6 equals 0. Okay, so let's rewrite these out here. So this is really x plus 3 halves, 2 of them, so squared, plus y minus 2, 2 of them, so that's squared. And now I'm just going to add these together. I've got negative 9 fourths. Plus, let's see, negative 4 and 6 make a 2. And if I want to add this, I'm really going to say, I'm just, I don't have my calculator, so I'm going to add these together. I'm going to say this is um, 8 divided by 4 is 2. So negative 9 fourths plus 8 fourths would get me a negative 1 fourth. And I'm just going to add that over, so I get a positive 1 fourth over here. Okay, again, if I went too fast for you, feel free to grab your calculator, add those together, and then bring it over to the other side. All right, so my last step, I am now in center radius form. We just need to state that center and radius. So my center would be a negative 3 halves, positive 2, 
my radius squared is equal to one fourth. So if I want the square root, remember, and you have a fraction, you just do it to the top and to the bottom. Just square root everybody. So r equals one half. And we've got our center and radius. All right, so just like I promised you, it's going to get even nastier. We're going to throw some geometry review questions in here. Now, this is not something we did earlier in the year, so there is a bit of new stuff in here tonight, well, from geometry. All right, sometimes you need to figure out the center, okay? And we, if you can't have it, and if they didn't give it to you, all right, we'll use the midpoint formula to get that. Now, what is the midpoint formula? Boy, it's been a long time. Basically, you average your x's, so you add your two x values, and there's two of them, so you would divide by two comma, because it's a point, and then you add your two y values and divide by two because there's two y values. And make sure you just write it as a coordinate. It is a point that you're finding. And sometimes you don't have the length of the radius. So what do you use there? Well, you'd have to find the distance if you want to know the length of something. All right, and that requires our favorite distance formula. Do you remember that from geometry? It's been a while. Basically, you take the difference in the x's, x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And that will get you the length of a radius or a diameter depending upon what you found. So let's try some. All right, first question. Write the center radius equation of a circle whose center is negative 3, negative 6 and passes through the point 4, 8. All right, so here's what I do. I can't do these without a quick little sketch. I make an x and y axis, and I'll plot the first point, negative 3, negative 6. Okay, and then I'm going to put a C there because they said that is the center of my circle. So visually, what am I picturing? Well, if this is the center, the circle has to go around it. And it has to pass through the point negative 4, 8. So negative 4, 8 is going to be up here. Okay, now I kind of just draw it in with a little dotted. Now I can't, whoops, I'm going to, whoops. Um, I just... Oops, I don't know why I'm not drawing. I just kind of put like a dotted circle for myself here so I know that that C better be in the center of my picture, okay? And the circle looks like that. So what do I need? Well, I have the center so I can start my equation. X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared equals R squared. Well, I have the center, so that's easy. So that's X plus 3 squared plus Y plus 6 squared equals, now I need to figure out the radius, okay? Now you can't, it's not a vertical line because it was off kilter a little, right? This was negative 3, 6 here, or, and this was negative 4, 8. And you can't count diagonals. Let me say that again. You can't count diagonals. So this is where the distance formula comes in. The radius is equal to the length of that line. So off to the side, we're going to have to calculate the distance formula. Okay, so it's the x minus x. So I'm going to go negative 4 minus negative 3. Notice how I put those two negatives in back to back. Squared plus, take the difference of the y's, 8 minus negative 6 squared. Okay, so change in the x, subtract the x's, subtract the y's. Now just follow through carefully. I'm going to link those two up and make a plus sign. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. 8 plus 6 is 14, and 14 squared is 196, and if I add that, I'm basically going to get the square root of 197. Now, remember, just common sense, you found the length of what? That represents the radius. The whole thing across would be the diameter, but this represents the radius. So I'm going to say radius equals the square root of 197. Now, just ask yourself, what goes in here? Radius squared. So now square both of them. And if I square that, my radius squared is just plain old 197. So that's what I'm going to set this equal to. And there is the equation of the circle. All right, let's try another one here. Write the equation of a circle whose diameter has endpoints. Okay, again, I can't do these without a quick visual. 4, negative 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1. Negative 6, 7, six, oops, negative 6, 7, we're going to say is there. Now, again, you need to have these dotted lines on to show what you actually have. Do either of those points represent the center? 
Heck no. Okay, so you can kind of estimate someplace the center, I would say, is maybe around there. I don't know exactly what it is, but I know it's around there. And I'm going to draw my circle. Okay, whoops, that's a little football looking. Uh, but it's got to look something like this, correct? Okay, so now you have to find the center and you have to find the radius. All right, you need to go get both of them. All right, so let's talk about the center. Basically, if you want another word for center, smack in the middle would be midpoint. Okay, so I need to use my midpoint formula to get that. So it's parenthesis, add the x's, 4 plus negative 6 divided by 2, comma, add the y's, negative 1 plus 7 divided by 2, and we can get our center. Negative 4 plus 6 is negative 2 divided by 2, so that looks like a negative 1, uh, and that looks like 6 over 2 is 3. Did we ballpark it right? Does it kind of look like we plotted it at negative 1, 3? I'd say so. We were in the ballpark. We said it's about there, which was definitely negative and then positive. So we have our center. And now we have to go get the radius. Now be smart here. Which two points would you use that would actually describe the radius? Would you use the two endpoints that were given? Probably not. Those two points would give you the diameter, and then you'd have to cut it in half to get the radius. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from the center to one point here. So the two points I'm going to use to find my radius are my midpoint, negative 1, 3, and one of my endpoints, and I just picked negative 6, 7. Okay, now those two points I'm going to use to find my radius. Now like I said, you didn't have to do that. You could have found the whole thing. That would be the diameter. You just have to cut it in half. So I'm going to have to use that beautiful distance formula. All right, so it's x minus x, so negative 6 minus negative 1 squared plus y minus y, 7 minus 3 squared. All right, keep cleaning it up. Uh, these two together make a plus sign, so negative 6 plus 1. So negative 5 squared is 25. 7 minus 3 is 4. 4 squared is 16. If I add those together, I get the square root of 41. Okay, so this D is actually equal to the radius of the circle. So if I want to put it all together now, all right, I'm going to say it's x plus 1 squared plus y minus 3 squared equals, remember, this has to be radius squared. My radius is the square root of 41. So if I want radius squared, I have to square this, which would just get me 41. All right, one more pretty common one. This is write the general equation of a circle that is tangent to the x-axis with the center located at 4, negative 6. All right, so again, quick sketch. Uh, 4, negative 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Plot that point. And I'm going to put a C there again because that represents the center of the circle. Okay, so can you picture the circle going around the center? Now, there was one more catch to it. All right, I want you to very carefully understand what this word tangent means. Okay, you took geometry, so tangent, if you don't remember, tangent basically means it touches the curve once. Okay, kind of like a little kiss on the cheek. It just pecks it once. All right, it can't go through the picture. It just touches it once. All right, so now we have to carefully sketch that. And who are you tangent to? Well, the x-axis. All right, so let's think about what this picture is going to look like. I have to draw a circle, but a tangent means touch the x-axis once. So can you picture what that looks like? All right, I can't go through it. I'm only going to touch it once. So basically, I'm going to come out right to the x-axis, and I'm just going to draw it so it only touches once. And that's what tangent to the x means. All right, so now I have a center. All I need is my radius. You are allowed to draw horizontal or vertical lines. So I can draw that in. I don't need a distance formula. Horizontal and vertical lines, we can actually count. What is this distance? to the center. Well, we went over 4, so I would say that has a radius of 4. So I'm going to say my equation is x minus 4 squared plus y plus 6 squared. And again, what do you want here? r or r squared? Hopefully you put 16 there. Well, just like we promised, here's the last quiz question that we'll be looking for in your notebook tomorrow. Write the general equation of a circle that is tangent, this time to the y-axis, 
and has a center of negative 3 6. I suggest sketching it out real quickly like we did and it should be a piece of cake. We'll see you tomorrow.